Hey everyone, my name is Mike Andes. I'm the founder of Augusta Lawn Care. We have over 80 locations around North America. And today I actually did a consulting call with Dean King from Full Circle Landscapes. Uh, he's been on, uh, done a couple consulting calls with me throughout the past couple years. And today is a really good episode, I believe, for a lot of people that actually need to take a year to slow down their growth, focus on stacking cash, and it's something that I wish I would have known when I was 19 years old, like Dean is. So I hope it's really a, a good way for you to step back, realize that raising prices, reducing your close ratio, and increasing profits might be a good thing to do in your second or third year of business. Slow down growth, but increase margins, increase profits, and be able to sustainably grow the business as you move forward, allowing you to sleep better at night and allowing the business to be healthier financially. Can't hear you one second. Yeah, Mike, you how go. are you? <laughs> good, man. What's up? Long time to see, right? Dude, you painted your wall pink. Let's go. I did. I did. You know, got it. If I'm paying all this money for the office, it at least has to have some. <laughs> in it, you know? uh, how long it took you to paint that wall? Um, it was me and uh, <laughs> one of our team members when we were busy, and it, everyone were, like had some time, and it was uh, longer than it should have. I, I suck at painting, but you know. me too, dude. Cool, man. How's things been? Good. You know, pretty good. Conference was awesome this year, by the way. Good. 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 So, and so I haven't, I haven't for the past, like probably month and a half, I haven't seen any of your videos. So get, maybe give me a quick update. So, um, yeah, that's on me. I've been, uh, busy. Um, so where we're at currently, and I appreciate that you watched those by the way, and I am working on talking slower. It's in progress because <laughs> custom, everybody says it to me all the time. Okay. Hey Liz. Um, but yeah, so where we are now is we're just, we had a snow, we've had snowstorms, which is awesome for me because uh, we invested a bunch of snow equipment, which is a dumb investment, but I was kind of hoping I was gambling on the fact that we're, we were, came in the, like, we lost $12,000 last year in like, which was part of that was because I reinvested. I mean, all of it was because I reinvested, but um, so I was, we need cash in the spring, obviously. So I was gambling that if we spent more money in snow equipment over the winter, we'd get some snow and it luckily it's kind of paid off so far. So we're at net zero currently, and if we get another snowstorm or more salting and stuff, we'll be in a good you spot. You just got hit. You just got hit last weekend, right? Yeah, we yeah. got like six inches, which is awesome. Cool. For us. So, um, yeah, um, so that was good. And I guess lately I've just been uh, doing uh, do a mess to get ready for spring, just knocking things off the spring to-do list um, to get ready. Hiring just after a conference, I lit a fire in my butt, so I just hired uh, – two new team members and just sent out one more job offer and I'm waiting to see if they accept it to where I'm going to send two more out. So um, we should be good. We're hiring, I'm going to hire four people, assuming that one's not going to come in and we'll have three in the spring. And if all four show up, great. I can definitely put somebody else to uh, work. Um, that's kind of, did you want to know anything else before I kind of go into some questions I had about that kind of stuff? Nope. Go for it. Sweet. So um, as far as hiring goes, um, I guess, well, the biggest, the biggest problem I'm having currently is cash. Like, I think I'd be in a really, if I had, you know, $25,000 in a bank account, I would be set for this year because we've got the employees, the branding's been killing it. Like pink trucks are just killing it around here, which is awesome. And then, you know, we've been doing some marketing YouTube stuff, just branding plays, which with the Blanc Red Design website, which kill, ours kills it, by the way, uh, has been doing really well together. So we've been, um, we've, we're already getting spring leads and stuff and it's been converting well. So I know we're going to have a big year. And I guess the biggest thing is like, do I go for hiring more employees and risk that? Or is it, I'm just worried that if I take on too much payroll and through the training, we're not like, we're going to have a point where it gets the, we get really slim on cash. And I mean, I would rather, you know, charge my own credit cards and not make, make payroll, but I don't want to have to go to that point. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. Like I would highly recommend taking a year where you really stack some cash, yeah. right? Um, especially after seeing your videos and the ups and downs, like the ups and downs are, um, are accentuated when you don't have as much cash. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, yes, losing people is horrible, but like the gut punch is a lot worse when you know that, like, how am I going to like keep this thing together financially? Right. Yeah. So if I was you, I would say, don't spend any money on marketing. you got the website, you got the branding side. That's going to bring plenty of leads. Right. I would really, really focus on Okay, if I'm gonna hire four people, that's gonna be my focus. I'm gonna hire. I'm gonna go hire six of them, so that I don't. I'm not left with four, and then I le lose two of them in a week, and now I'm toast, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I would not spend money on marketing. I wouldn't focus on growth. I would focus 100% on stacking cash, right. um, because you really, you really need 50 grand going into next spring. Agreed, agreed. And um, all right, cool. And. I think I knew I knew you were gonna say that, but I have to hear you. I had to pay all the time to hear you say it to me. 
because um you know it's just one of those things um but all right cool so i guess follow up to that that relates on that really well is one of the biggest i had two big questions was one about off, office people and the other one was about how much we should charge an hour and with people so we we paid 20 bucks an hour base rate i could probably get it down to 18 like i could probably could you know still hire people at 18 but you know that's where the quality of applicant would be a little less and then the other thing is we have three guys that we kept on a winner that are awesome and they all you know know what they're doing and they're great but they are um they're at 20 and i don't want to you know lower their pay and pay for performance like i know it's not going to be super smooth in the spring just because we don't have all the numbers from last year and i think my estimated skills are a lot better than they were so i'm pretty sure i can rock that this year but i'm just worried that currently we're at i know at 60 bucks an hour we get too much work obviously so 70 bucks an hour is where we were and that was great but I don't want to go to $80 an hour and then be not busy. But if we were at 80 bucks an hour, that's, you know, 26 on P for P when they're on the job and then they could kill it. And then they're making it every week and they, you know, believe in it and all that stuff. I would switch to 80. Yeah. And just, okay. yeah, because like you, what you can do is come, come summer when it potentially could slow down a bit. Um, you could cut E fees, you could cut dump fees, or you could potentially just charge less hours. Right. And be a little bit tighter on those just to, to get the guys work. Um, but I would raise that because that was my, you know, last year when, when so many, so many craziness was happening with the employees, my biggest concern was the fact that like P for P is a bunch of hot air if they're not able to hit it. Right. And I mean, like they got to hit it 60, 70, 80% of the time. Um, otherwise it, it's just a bunch of hot air. And so I think if you move it to 80, you'll be just fine. Um, especially in your market, things are getting so expensive. Like people are used to it. Um, whether that be raising existing customers' prices or just new ones, but definitely like projects like where you can change that day to day level. Yeah. Don't stress about it. If you're really busy and you got like, like you got three hires now, are you hiring four more people? Is that your plan? So we have yeah, we have three people currently, and I'm going to hire four more starting in two starting in like the, the first week in March, and then the other two starting the first week in April when we start mowing. Okay, and how many of them do you expect to actually hang out? Like, do you need six people? Is that kind of what you, you need? Five? I really I need three because we have we've got we're gonna try to run three trucks next year because I'm selling the truck that I hate. Um, uh, so I have we're gonna have to try to run three trucks. We're gonna run three people on a landscaping crew. I know it's not ideal, but I don't want to spend cash on another truck, obviously. Um, and then we're gonna run two two man mowing crews with the stand on mowers and just one mower per crew and run it that way. I think so. Then we need like seven. these four people. Have you already hired them? And they have a scheduled start time. Two have two have two have hired and have scheduled start time. Okay, and and you're thinking about getting two more in? I yeah, I just offered a job to one more person uh, who is if they take it would be fantastic because they're interviewed super well. And then the other there's two other people that are pretty good that I, if the person I just offered a job to declines, I'm gonna offer those two to come on. I would stag if you're gonna hire more people, I would stagger them later, right? Because later in the year. Yeah, because because this is what my 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 uh, concern was last year. You were onboarding so many new people. You're just asking for problems, yeah. right? Um, like you have three solid guys now. That's 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 a big bonus. But if you bring in four newbies in in a week, um, you can destroy quality very quickly. And then again, you're right back to fighting fires, and you get stressed, and you say that something. Yeah, and like like it's the whole cycle, right? So I would not be opposed to being like, okay, we're gonna raise prices. We are not going to do marketing, so that's going to dampen growth. But that's not what I care about. Like it, it like in the three in, in a three to five year window, you taking one year slowing down growth yeah. right now and focusing on profitability will allow next year to be the year you get to a million very quickly. Yeah. Right. So I would I would just be like I like the fact that you're over hiring because you're going to lose a couple of those people. That's just how life goes. Um, and we have this opportunity to hire right now. Like this weird window. Like we talked about at conference, but. Um, I would stagger those hires. I would raise those prices that you can, they can hit above base pay. And if you ever got to the point where like, okay, you hired seven people and you only need, you said three, that's a little yeah. bit concerning because what you're going to go do is you're going to go start selling work for lower prices just to keep them busy. Right. Yeah. So that's why I would stagger them into the spring. How far? Rush. Like what, like um, give what me date, like what, how would you stagger them? Like how would you? At least, on at least two weeks between. Right, yeah. because within yeah. two weeks, a, a decent worker is going to get up to speed. They're going to be able to go solo. They're going to know how mm -hmm. things run, uh, and then that way you don't feel like a whole bunch of newbies are dumped on you. It's good for the morale of your existing guys because they can keep doing P for P even with a bunch yeah. of newbies running around. Uh, and then you also have a, a way to kind of throttle the, the spring rush because it's not going to all drop on you in the middle of February. It's going to come slowly in March and then pick up in April and May, right? So if you can stagger those hires, that'd be ideal. 
And then what you say is like, look, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, plan to have you start March 15th. It might be before that. And you say that. So if someone drops off, you call them like, hey, do you want to start earlier? You can, right? Got it. So um, that would be my recommendation. I'm concerned about dumping four new people on, especially when you know you only need three, like immediately. Yeah. I would stagger those into the spring rush and then know that you might have to call someone if they all are working great. Like worst case scenario, everyone works out great. You call the seventh person like, hey, we just don't have enough work for you. And just be honest. And like, that's going to hurt the pride a little bit more, but yeah. it's a whole lot better than trying to run things really, really uh, fast. And, and I did just that on, yeah. on really low cash, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. That makes sense. And then I guess following that, the, I just want to hit this because before I forget is office person versus not obviously um, if I had command center, I'd be in a very different state, but um, since I don't have it, I've looked into call, but actually Zach looked into call boss and sent it to, over to me, but um, you know, I feel like it loses. I feel like I don't like my biggest reason we, we haven't been charging high prices hundred percent, honestly, is because I don't feel like we're worth it because I see all the imperfections and I'm in it every day. And I'm like, damn, we messed up this. Sorry to curse. We messed up this job. We messed up that job, all that stuff. And I'm like, like, and then when a client's like, oh, that's a lot of money. I'm like, you know what? You're right. We're not, I'm not worth that. And I lower the price. So I'm worried if I use a call service and like that, I don't feel like we have that connection with the clients, but we're not. So I guess it's twofold. One is cash. One is how I feel about the price. What's your close ratio? So in the fall, our close ratio is like 60%. And what about spring? And stuff. In spring last year, I wasn't tracking it. It was and this is obviously a guess, which is always wrong, but I would guess probably around 50%, 30 to 50%, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like, you know, compounding, like, I don't care what people say about prices. I only look at close ratio, right? And if you are in hyper growth, you're going to be above 50%. If you're trying to grow, 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 typically 70%. If you're really trying to grow and you don't really care about close ratio, uh, sorry, uh, profitability, when you start wanting to become profitable, you want to be around 40% or below like 30 to 40% is not horrible. If you're charging premium prices and, and if you start falling under 30 and, and you're and like, that's when I start getting concerned because then it's a waste of all the time and going and doing estimates. Right. So um, I'd be shooting for that. And I think you'll get there and, and you just got to be confident. Like, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm only looking for 40% of people to accept. And that's, that's fine. And yes, that means that one out of, or two out of three people are going to say you're too expensive and that's just part yeah. of the game right so don't get locked up in that and then the second thing is like if you're going to use a call boss or whoever um to answer the phones realize that there's a trade-off the trade-off is yes they don't get the level of personalization that you enter the phone or someone else in the company that's really connected does but they also get a phone they get to pick the phone picked up when they call right and there's a big trade-off that gets a speed versus quality like do we are we going to focus so much on like the person answering the phone is the person who cut your lawn last like is that really that you know important to the customer or is it the fact that when they call they actually get a person on the phone so um i definitely wouldn't be hiring an office person mostly because um i'm concerned about how much time it's going to take Me from too. you uh training that person and then if they leave in the spring rush you're toast like you're putting a ton of eggs into one basket Right. And especially at your size, when you're fragile like this, which is just normal, you're part, yeah. part of growth is the, the worst thing to have anyone leave as an office person because they hold all the keys to everything, you know? Uh, and so if that, if that, if that would have happened last year, when you two, you know, all your employees walk off the job, like, trust me, that's when businesses close. Right. So yes. I'm a, I'm a little concerned by that. I'd say that I would do, right now. Do you take the calls? I take the calls and I, I pick up, I do pretty, I mean, I'm like, pretty good for somebody that's working. I pick up probably 80% of them. Like anytime the phone rings, I'll, I'll wrap up whatever call I'm on and like the 30, the, like, you know, the five seconds you have before it, you know, and then I answer the phone. Like, so I'm pretty good about it, but you know, I'm just worried in the spring when I'm trying to do everything. And then, you know, it's like, it, I just, I'm worried that I'll, it'll get too much of me. And then the bigger thing too, is like, I then, and I don't mind doing it. Like I don't mind, I work all the time anyway. Um, sometimes on the wrong stuff, obviously, but, um, you know, if it's, I'm, it's the estimates I'm worried about. It's all the other office clerical tasks that, other than just answering the phone as well that I'm worried about, um, just getting stuff out. I mean, our estimates are pretty simple. Like, like there's the same way that you guys do them or similar at least. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the thing about phone calls that is 
the reason why I like to off, offload them first is because they're extremely reactionary. Meaning like when they ring, you stop what you're doing and you do it. Sending estimates out, emailing customers back, sending invoices, that is kind of done on your time. You can do that when you get home. You can do that on a slow day. Like it's a little bit more flexible. The, the reason I want to offboard calls first is because it makes you extremely reactionary. You're doing an estimate. You're on a job site. You're in a team meeting and your phone's ringing. What are you doing? You're stopping what you're doing and, and switching. So like, I guarantee you'd probably pay a few hundred dollars a month if they just took the calls for you. Yeah. Um, and I guarantee you'll never take them back um, because you'll get, you'll get, start to fall in love with the fact that you get a set. Oh, hey, this is what I'm doing today, whether it be a project, hiring, working with a team member, and I don't have to like, answer the phone. That literally might mean that you get a message back from a calling service saying, hey, you need to call this person back, but now it's on your schedule, right? Got but it. you still accommodate the client by answering the phone. And yes, it's not in the perfect world that you are able to take care of them in the moment, mm -hmm. but th when we start looking at your, your profitability, it yeah. needs to be where you can stay focused and be a little bit more uh, deliberate with your time throughout the day. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. So it, it would be worth it to then offload to a call service then you would say probably, right? Even if you just did during, during certain hours, right? You're like, okay, I know that every, in the mornings, I'm always going to be doing estimates. I want to make sure that during those times I'm focused on that, whatever it is, right? You can do certain yeah. hours. Um, I think that eventually you just realize that like, you know, even if you're paying them a dollar and 50 cents per minute, you might only have 20 minutes a day. That's $30 a day and yeah. you, tw times 20, that's $600 in a month. But again, you're never answering the phone. Yeah. That means that you're gonna, you're still probably have to call back. Like these calling services, unfortunately, a lot of them are somewhat glorified phone call, uh, um, voice messages, right? Like they're basically like taking information and you gotta call them back still. Yeah. However, um, it makes again, it's more about you being intentional with your time because now they say, hey, all right, Dean will call you back later today. You then choose when that hour block is gonna be. Right. And you say, okay, maybe uh, I don't, I don't answer phone calls, but then from two to 3 PM every single day, I'm going to follow up on whatever call notes I need to have from my virtual assistant and, and then go through them and be deliberate. And then that way you knock out 15 calls in an hour, instead of having 15 calls, one every hour of the day. Okay. That makes sense. And follow up question to that is, uh, I've been meaning to ask you this for like two years, but texting, does Augusta allow texting? Um, we're working because our it. clients love our my clients love texting and i can't i don't know if, if you can figure it out i can't bring no matter how many times i call ring central they can't do an auto responder for texting which i wish yep. they could yep. but like then i'm stuck in this thing where people expect immediate responses and i'm in the middle of stuff or it's yep. at night and i'm not like i'm not like the person like that i'll respond at night but it's like you know what's your opinion on that yeah, like I like texting because most customers do as well. The problem with texting is we expect instantaneous. Um, and so if you can't deliver that, you shouldn't have it, right? Um, as well as uh, it's very hard to keep track of inside your CRM if there's not an integration, right? So if someone texts you, you might have this whole thread of what's going on. Well, now someone from you know, your virtual assistant or you the next week go into their, their account on their, your CRM. And if it's not connected, like, that kind of communication is outside the system, mm -hmm. right? So I don't like that. Um, that's the biggest thing I don't like. And so um, we've, we've really avoided it so far. Uh, I'm, we're working on trying to make that a possibility, but it's still a matter of, it's gotta be where it is just as integrated as an email and we, it's easy to search, it's easy to track <clears throat> because when you have multiple people in an, in an account, like we have command center yeah. and you will have down the road, you've gotta make sure that everything is recorded and searchable. Um, and that's my biggest concern with texting. Got it. So how would you go about, cause how would you go about cutting that out then? Cause like a lot of our clients have, that we've had for a while have grown to really like texting cause it's easy for them. And I mean, it's hard for me to deal with, but like it, it's easy for them. So how would you phase that out? Do they like the fact that they get their invoices and estimates via text? Or they just like mm -hmm. communicating with you via text? They just like to complain and communicate via text. And a lot of times it's stupid stuff, but like, it's just, they like to communicate via text. All of our stuff is through like all of our estimates, all of our invoicing, everything numbers wise or anything like that is through, you know, um, email, like through text is like, Hey, can you come next? The biggest thing I'm worried about is like the little sales I wouldn't make. Like, Hey, you know, are you guys able to come weed this, you know, in the, in the next couple of weeks? Hey, could you trim my bushes or whatever? And it's super simple for people to send them. And I just don't know if they make the phone call or whatever. Yeah. I, I, if I was you and you're trying to get away from it, because especially right now that phone is coming to you 
And mm -hmm. they literally know that when they text that number, they're coming, it's coming to Dean. That's a big, big bottleneck, right? Mm -hmm. um, because what's going to happen is you're going to be doing an estimate. They're going to text you, say, hey, let's skip the day's service. An hour later, you see the text message and the crew has already showed up at the property and mowed it, mm -hmm. right? Like that's going to happen. Um, and so if you wanted to kind of get them off of that kind of gravy train, I'd be potentially making an auto. Like, Are you able to in Ring Central? Was my problem. I don't think you can. No. And it, it's green um, text regardless. And people just so like, you know what I mean? I would have a copy and paste that you would text every single person that sends you a text message that says, this number is no longer receiving messages. <laughs> Contact the office. Like it, you're going to yeah. make a couple people unhappy, but realize that how they're communicating with you is not your value add. Your value add no. is if they're accepting estimates or, or paying invoices on that, they're not, they're complaining. So yeah. if you make it really, really easy for someone to complain, they're going to complain, right? If yeah. I could just look out my window and be like, oh, I don't like that. Boom, boom, boom. Like that's too easy. Right. Or just a picture of something. Yeah. That's yeah. And you don't even know what it's about. It's like, yeah, it looks kind of good to me. Right. So, yeah. um, and, and again, that's not trackable. No one else besides no. you knows that bit of information. And so I would pitch that in, whether it be an auto, like two things. One, when you start the spring rush, I would make a video or an email telling them what's going on in terms of whether it be price increases, but then I'd also be saying, you know, we're trying to make sure that all of your communication is in one place. And we've had a big, we've had trouble with text messages coming to uh, employees' cell phones and it's not in the system and therefore we're not able to serve you at the, the highest level. So we're trying to keep everything in one and we won't be accepting text messages for now. It'll be all going through email so we can search it. It's all uh, cataloged. And that's what I would recommend. Like, honestly, if someone has a cell phone, a text, and they really want to complain, it's just mm -hmm. as easy to send an, a, an email, Yeah. right? Like, it's an app. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's just a different thing in their mind. It's like they can't complain as easily, it, but it's literally is just as simple. Yeah, it's the same. So um, I, would, I would just pitch that going into the spring rush, like, hey, there's no more texting able. And then I would make an auto responder, i.e. you, every single time a customer call, complains or yeah. calls or, or, or texts or whatever. And just say like, this number is no longer in service for uh, full circle landscape. Please contact the office via this email or phone number. Cool. And uh, with that two-way texting on service autopilot, have you tried that for like, and I just thought about using it for something. I don't know how to make it work. If you do like one click through that or whatever, but like, for example, for like salting or whatever with us, like we have to insurance, I hate insurance, but like, you know, with, we have to like ask before we salt or else it's on it. So like stuff like that or little things like mowing, like, hey, change of day. Like, I think it'd be a cool, it seems like it'd be a cool way to communicate, but same problem. So what do you think about that? Um, Yeah, like the big thing is I don't want people responding back. Like, I don't care about notifying customers. I, I like that a lot. Um, Like things like, oh, we, we put down chemicals at your property, whatever. Like notifications are great. What I don't like is them texting me back if I'm not able to track and search that data. Got right. It. Cause it's going to get lost. And yeah. so, um, you know, like service off has two way, for example, is it, it's okay, but it's not very, it's not great, uh, in terms of being able to search and track and multiple people get into account and know exactly what happened. It's mm -hmm. not that good, like with pictures and things like that. So, uh, I'm a big fan of using it for notifications and I like using it for invoices and estimates like the links. Uh, but I don't like them. I don't want to be a dialogue back and forth from my cell phone to a customer. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Um, uh, one sec. So how much cash do you keep versus growth? Like how much cash do you try to keep? Because my problem is whenever cash comes in, this is obviously not, I, I know logically it's not the best thing to do, but when I see cash in the bank account, I go, Oh, I'm going to buy a leaf loader because it'll make leaf clearance easier. Buy a leaf loader. Oh, I'm going to buy another plow because it'll make some more money in the winter. Buy the plow. Oh, there's a good deal in this like salter. I'm going to buy salt. Like that's all examples from last year, obviously. But how do you like, how do you keep money? I guess it's a dumb question, but how do you keep money in the bank account and not spend it on business stuff? Not myself. Yeah, I, I would say like, first off, realize that you need cash in the business. What is that amount? So let's just say, okay, you said 25,000, you'd sleep better at night. Like, and honestly, in my mind, it's like, you need enough cash at this point when you're, when you can grow and you can expand because you don't have like a lot of um, uh, other obligations. Like you just need to be able to sleep at night. That's the bottom line. And if 25,000 is that number. It's not that high, but yeah. I Maybe would say you need 25 at least. I would say that. <laughs> okay. hundred okay. um, percent. Because yeah. when you have seven employees, 25 grand can go like that. Yeah. Overnight. So um, that, that, that. Uh, 
that will keep you up at night, right? So um, I wish I would have known this when I was going, you know, get, you know growing. I, I, I did the same thing as you, like see money in an account. Okay, go buy equipment, go hire, go whatever. Um, and you grow fast. And that's great. But it, you're, you're, you're going to burn out, right? Yeah, I mean, and I have a so, relatively high uh, threshold for stress. But I have recently hit that a little bit ago <laughs> when there were like legitimately it was not good. And I was like, wow, okay, that's, no. let's not do that again. And it was, yeah, so. Yeah, so like I would Makes say, sense. I would say literally putting a cap on yourself, like I need 25,000 in the bank and I will not spend a single dollar on equipment until then. And that's possible. The local shop literally last year did not spend a single, like did not buy any equipment. That's impressive. So it's a matter of like just being strict, like a diet. It's like, look, I got to cleanse myself with this ideology. I see cash, I spend money. Like it, it's just, yeah. it, you'll never be able to save. You'll never be able to grow it. You'll never really invest it, right? Cause you just keep yeah. buying equipment. And so that's why like this year it's like, hey, we're intentionally saying, which as much as I'm saying that we're intentionally not growing, you're going to be going from three to seven employees. Like that's a huge, mm -hmm. like, let's just step back and say that's a ton of growth. Yeah. And I, I would actually be more comfortable if there was more like five and we hire seven knowing that we'll probably lose two that's okay um but even if you go to five like you're gonna grow 50 percent this year right well, well way more than that even because last year our price is like we averaged overall 45 dollars an hour if oh, you mercy. divide it but not it. not on property like overall which is still low but yep. they were like actually and that was with me working and not paying myself so that's like that's probably closer to like 40 or 38 or something like awful yeah, yeah so yeah. like we're we could double probably just by correcting our pricing yeah yeah so i think you know it, it, it's a matter of you, you need to say you need to give yourself a dollar amount that you got to get to before you spend a single penny right and in my mind dean you need at least twenty five thousand in the bank like at least okay um like even at your size i would be losing sleep at 25 that that's literally yeah. two payrolls that's a pay that's one payroll and, a, and an accident yeah that you know and i if you convince yeah, yourself right. of that and let that hit you though then you won't spend the mm -hmm. money no you're right for sure and i've and that's happened and I've, I've had it where the day before payroll we're not going to make it and i have to do some magic to make like and we don't have a line of credit yet we're getting one but not yet and that'll just get myself in other issues if i don't start saving cash either so um with that i think part of our problem and that's gonna but, mean that's gonna mean there's gonna be a day where you're like sick i really need an extra leaf blower because i have seven people now and i need an extra leaf blower and you're gonna have to say i am not like you guys are gonna have to go pick it up from so and so right yeah. because we can't i know in the short you're like well that doesn't make sense it's super inefficient i agree that one day you're gonna spend an extra ten dollars in time and fuel going in the blower but we don't have the next 12 months to recoup the cost of that blower we've got to focus on the next three to six and conserve cash, right? So okay. it'll probably take you throughout spring rush of not mm -hmm. spending any money. Yeah. But if you do that, you'll go, come out of it with, with like a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, and that would be, I actually, I don't, like I said, I, I have a very high tolerance for stress and the very, I don't know, it's weirdly like not, like obviously I know it's terrible, weirdly like I'm not as stressed about the cash because now I can pull things out of my butt to do that kind of stuff, but I, uh, I do dream about having more money to actually like be able to do something with, whereas here I'm playing with not a lot. Um, question about that though, part of it, and I wrote everything down before you came here, so I have a nice little sheet. But um, so our fixed expenses at our size company, we did 250 last year, whatever you make of that. Um, and I have the PL, I can email it to you or whatever, but I have the, our PL. But um, you know, we spend our fixed expenses per month are like 4,500 bucks in fixed expenses are, you know, our offices, actually it's even more than that now. Like it's close, call it five grand a month with no, and that's, you know, if, obviously if nobody shows up, that's what our fixed expenses is. And the only payment on there is truck or is, um, is the mowers, oh, and the mowers in a truck. Um, so it's like, is that high? Like, I feel like that's high or is, or is our pricing just low? Um, I don't usually look at ratios like that simply because yeah. every business is so different, right? Um, like if you had payments on trucks, then it's going to inflate that number. If you were mm -hmm. renting versus buying, if you had an office versus you didn't, right? So I'm not really too concerned, like 5,000 a month, that's $60,000 a year. That's 24% uh, of your revenue is going out the door to um, 
or yeah. last year it did go out the door towards fixed expenses, which is potentially somewhat high. But you're also, if you can keep it at 5,000, go do half a million in revenue this year, then. And uh, I could do that so easily. Yeah. I mean, we so overbought you, trucks and done, stuff last year. Well, what you've done is you, you've invested a bunch in the infrastructure, right? So now it's yeah. a matter of like, let's execute using the infrastructure and actually have good asset utilization where the trucks go out every single day. And it's not like just you and one other truck. It's like, you, we're using all the trucks every day and we're mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to crunch more in, right? That's when you'll start making money. So, Agreed. and that's when you can double the revenue without having to spend any equipment truck costs. Yeah. Now that makes, that makes complete sense. I mean, we, we literally last year, I have a car and we have four trucks. That's that. And I drive the car around and most of the year we only had one or two trucks running. And so we're paying whatever it is, you know, a thousand bucks a month in insurance and all that other stuff to not use it. I mean, only the truck that one of the trucks got used every day, it had payments on it, but I got a good deal on that truck. I talked about one last time we talked and I tried to sell it and it just, the truck I bought stunk, stunk. So I just kept it. But, um, you know, it's, so yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Cool beans. Yeah. If you have the three cars, three trucks and a car, like there's just no reason why you need to buy anything else to get to four yeah. or 500,000. Right. I think the only so, thing we need is to, let me really think about this actually. We're, so we can't use ramp racks because we need to have 60 inch mowers at least to be competitive, 60 or 72 inch mowers in our market. So I bought a truck that I bought this last year thinking I would do it and I haven't had time to, but luckily I hired a welder who wants to landscape. So that's awesome. So he's going to weld. I, the truck bed was smashed. So I put the truck bed off and we're going to put a drive on truck bed onto one of our other trucks to use. I mean, that's a couple grand in steel, but I figure it'll save the trailer and all of the terribleness. Like one of our trailers is at the shop right now. Like I hate trailers. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not a bad idea. The bottom line is like, we can always make sense of spending more money right always <laughs> so it, it's a matter of like if you're gonna do okay you gotta say hey what are the things i'm gonna do and then like okay. nothing like strict diet right it, it is a financial diet of we will not mm -hmm. spend money on equipment or making things better on our setups or anything like that um yeah so and the worst part is you're gonna watch my youtube videos where i yeah it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> oh man um do you guys track your trucks we do. We, we use the trackers that go into the kind of the uh, console. OBD port. Yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, we used to, we used to do it because we needed to know where they were at um, in terms of they're on hourly. Now we don't really track them as much because they're on P4P. So it's like, I don't care if you stop at the gas station, you know, do whatever you got to do. Um, but it's still useful for when things do go down for the, uh, the general manager to be able to say, okay, you're close to so-and-so. Hey, can you go to so-and-so's place? Here's what address they're at. So that's what it's mostly used for. Um, but yeah, we do, we still track them. So would you recommend signing up for a service like that and paying the monthly or no, just save the money? Um, not at your size, like three, once you get above three, four trucks, that's when I would say it's, it's probably worth it. But you have a pulse on everyone in the business, even now, yeah. right? You know where everyone's at, you know all the jobs. Yeah. So uh, in my opinion, again, once you start not knowing the job, customers' names, once you stop, uh, knowing you know, doing the estimates, that's when it's important to have tracks trackers because you can't gauge whether or not they're ahead of behind schedule. You kind of need to know that sort of stuff. So P for P will keep them honest though. Like honestly, I don't know if we'd still if we would track the trucks now if we would have had P for P years ago. We just had the trackers already, right? So, yeah. um, but then you kind of get used to it and like it, the fact that you can see a live map and yeah. know where everyone's at. But again, yeah. we're talking about 15 trucks. So like, that's what makes it work. But we don't tell our franchisees they really need them until after three or four trucks. Cool. And um, Brad, by the way, was awesome in that I did a P4P thing with him and I signed up for it, but uh, he was awesome okay. uh, with questions. And one of the questions I had was uh, that I forgot to ask him was about leaf cleanups and P4P because our leaf cleanups, like I don't want to do hourly because that has all its own issues. So I hate doing that. And the clients are like, oh, it's too much money. Let's spend it. So we stopped doing hourly. But the problem is that, you know, it could take, if the wind blows the other direction, like I know the, it'll average out higher, but you know, then you have people being like, oh, well, those guys made all this money. I didn't make any money because you gave me the crappy job. You know, like how do you work with that? Because we do a ton of leaf cleanups. Yep. Do you, uh, when you say leaf cleanups, are they usually like monthly or like one time leaf cleanups or like a part of the mowing schedule kind of thing? So it's like a, you know, clients get between maybe some of our monthly, but usually it's between like one and four leaf cleanups a year. And I'll go out and estimate, and I'll be like, Hey, this leaf, and we have leaf cleanups, you know, like, Hey, this leaf cleanup is going to be, you know, $1,500. Like just massive properties, tons of leaves everywhere. 
like and tons we have those the blood all massive equipment that goes out there too but like you know and i've had some where like last year where i just said hey we have to like i'm just gonna charge you 80 bucks an hour like for per man like i just can't even estimate this but you know how would you do that on p for p where the, the chances like there's a chance that i say hey this job is gonna be you know four hours or you know eight hours and then all of a sudden it's a windy day before the, the job comes and then there's double the amount of leaves double the work the guys are working for you know they're making no money on p4p for that day because there's all this extra work they've got to realize that, it, that you're taking the average right like you've got to make sure that you know four out of five jobs they can beat which means one out of five they're gonna that's gonna happen right so they've yeah. got to be like okay realize i have a two-week pay period i've got to get you know uh, come back tomorrow and hopefully that one I, you know, deemed budget for eight hours, I get done three. That happens yeah. too. They that, don't complain during then, yeah. of course, right? So <laughs> they've got to take the law of averages and they've got to understand that. Uh, but as long as, again, 70 to 80% of them are getting above base pay every period, then they will get mad. If they're getting, they will get mad if, if they're not hitting above base pay mm -hmm. once in a blue moon, right? Yeah. I, I, would, I would completely side with them on that. But if they mm -hmm. know that most of the time, the far majority, uh, and when I say 70 to 80%, typically it's not like they don't get above base pay sometimes. It's a matter of 70 to 80% of the employees just will make it or won't. Like there's going to be that 20% of people that are always on the low performing side and they're always kind of hit the best. But 70 to 80% of them have never even seen base pay, right? Like, like there's employees I know specifically have never, ever hit base pay in years. And so that's impressive. The, the fact of the matter is they've realized, okay, look, I'm going to have that job that kills me. I'm, I'm, and I get bruised up, but as long as I'm not doing five week projects and I know I'm going to have a couple mm -hmm. other projects in the next couple of weeks, I can, I can recover. Right. But um, yeah, it, it's just a matter of them trusting the process and trusting the system. And they can only do that if they're consistently hitting above base pay. Yeah. That's why I'm actually most bullish on raising your prices. Cause if you'll do that and you'll get them above base pay, all of a sudden you won't need seven employees. You'll still, you'll just need four and they'll get the work yeah. equivalent of seven. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so question about raising prices, and I'm sure this is when you've heard, but I just haven't heard your answer to it, or you haven't told me the answer personally. So, um, the question I have is like, sounds like truck going by my office, um, is when you raise prices, it's, you know, clients, I'm worried that clients are gonna be like, oh, they're expensive. And maybe it's just cause that's what my parents tell me people will say when I've mentioned it to them in the past, I stopped talking about business cause it ended, I realized it wasn't that helpful. I love my parents, but, um, so with that though, it's like, you know, I'm worried that I'm going to give somebody a price in the middle of spring. That's a good client of ours and be like, Hey, you know, this mulch job is going to be $3,000. And we're like, wow, I got it done last year for $1,700. Like you guys are awful. Cancel my moment. Cancel my this. You tried to gouge me. How, like, how do you deal with that when you're raising prices, be, you know, to control demand? There's 10 other people. I'm going to go sign up the next same day. Okay. Like it's a numbers game, man. Yeah. Like, Right. And th guess what? They're going to go try to find another service that offers everything you, you have. And they're going to realize it's the same price because everyone else's prices are going up too. Right. And if they want to downgrade service, yeah, they'll get it for cheaper, but they're not yeah. going to get what you offer. Right. So um, the bottom line is I honestly don't believe you believe in your prices. You I don't. believe it. Yeah. You believe you're worth about 40 an hour when you need to be charging 80. And mm -hmm. so you've lost confidence in your sales process and you don't believe you're worth what you're selling those prices for that's the biggest problem yeah is you you're, you haven't sold yourself on the, your value and so how you change that is realize that you are not the target customer to you you're you guys are only worth 30 to 40 dollars an hour right but to someone who cannot walk that has a lot of money wants to spend time on the weekends works like crazy hours and needs the time when they come home with their family you're worth 80 dollars an hour they want to look good in front of their neighbors. They would like the fact that you have a pink truck. So everyone knows in the neighborhood that they have a professional service. Like that's what you're selling. And so you've sold yourself on the fact that you're not worth 80 because you're not to you, but you're not the target customer, right? You're young. You have all the health. To, you don't have tons of money and a family and all the rest of it. So you are not the target customer. You've got to change your mindset and realize that you're not worth 80 an hour to you you're worth a whole lot more than that to the customer you're targeting got it that makes a lot of sense thank you because right that. now uh, yeah right now you're t that's why you're taking it so personal when people say about your prices being so uh high is because you believe them yeah 
but think about like this. If I, if someone's making $200,000 a year, they have $4 million in net worth and three homes and they, they have a, a big family with a bunch of grandkids, that hour that they get to save every single week not mowing is worth a whole lot more than $100. And you just have to find those customers, I guess. Just Numbers keep bidding game. them in. Yeah. Got it. That makes sense. And you're not going to have problems casting the net this year, right? Now that your website is ranking, now that your trucks are all painted, yeah. like all of that's like you're going to have tons of work coming in. That's not going to be the problem this year. So this is the time to buckle down on sell yourself on the value, raise your prices, get your guys above base pay, and your profit will your profit margins will get traction. So that next spring, you're like, okay, let's go for a million, and you'll have the cash to do it. Got it. Cause I have, the, we have the sit, we just, we're missing the cash basically. And we have to just take a year and get the cash. Yep. And you're still going to grow a lot. Like, let's just not, discount. Yeah, yeah, the fact yeah. of the matter is that you, you've built all the infrastructure. You just got to yeah. realize, okay, I have tons of infrastructure. Now let's utilize it. Right. Have those three trucks pounding out five days a week. What do you do when people ask for? No, no. Like the top part, Zach. Oh, Zachary. <laughs> 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 oh, that's hilarious. But I'll text him on with you, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we're going to probably double, even if we don't try to grow a lot just by raising factor of raising prices. I just have the, the want to just keep growing because I can take the stress of doing it, but it's, you know, it's the whole thing of like, even if I can take the stress, the business needs cash. And there is a chance that if we try to grow, I just go out of business because I've, yeah, you know, and your risks are getting larger when you have that many employees, yeah. that many trucks, like you need cash. Like it's mm -hmm. an obligation to them as employees to make yeah. sure their jobs are safe. But more importantly, like, like you said, you can take the stress all day long, but your bank account can't go below zero. It has. So. It doesn't like it. I get, I get penalties. <laughs> so that, that's the only thing you should focus on, right? You'll still yeah. grow just fine. Like you got to come to peace. The fact that even if you did 300,000 this year in revenue, if you could stack away 50 grand, that would be better than you doing 600,000 revenue and being strapped for cash this time next year. Yeah. You saying that hurts my ego, but I'm going to internalize that over the next couple of weeks and I'll get there. No one um, cares. No one besides no, I know. cares about how many, how many, what your revenue is. I know. And the IRS is in the only bank. cares about how much is in your bank. Yeah. No. It's fair. Um, health insurance? For yes, employees? no. Mm -hmm. I've, I want to do it. And I was thinking I could do like, obviously you can get it through the company, but that seems expensive and headachey. But like, what about a reimbursement, like a hundred dollar a month reimbursement for employees, just so we can say we have the benefit. The whole benefit of having um, health benefits is the fact that it's pre-tax dollars, right? So the, the employee is getting a benefit that they don't have to pay taxes on. So that, that's the whole reason of a benefit, right? Is that you as a company pay X amount and they don't have to pay that taxes on that as wages that's the benefit so there is no real benefit to give someone a stipend for health insurance right we did the same thing originally uh because number one we couldn't afford it number two um we just wanted to keep it simple uh so we gave them 100 but they were still getting taxed on that hundred dollars yeah. because it's not considered an actual benefit so the, the reason you would do health benefits is is to uh, make allow them to not have to pay as much taxes um and as well as some of them don't have access to health care um, outside of a employer uh, plan and typically their employer plans can be a lot cheaper than if they went and try to find it personally so that's the benefit giving them a stipend towards health is just i was gonna say your heart but that's gonna be taxed the same way that ordinary income is so what's your thoughts on that i wouldn't do it right now stack okay. cash yeah no we just recently did it and i probably still did it too early still too early yeah I, when you said like, oh, just try to, if you make no money this year, which I guess you weren't talking to me when you said that, but when if you make no money this year and just get employees, it's a good year. I went with, oh, I'll just do health insurance and make them happy. So yeah, but you'll it. be amazed, like, especially once you actually do have a, uh, a plan in place, how few of them at the entry level are going to actually accept it because they're already getting state benefits that are so much better than any plan you'll offer. Yeah. So like I, for example, if I was you, like what would be used is you say, hey, I'll reimburse any gym membership. Something like that is going to be higher value ticket to someone that's entry level that already has state benefits. But if you say, hey, look, if you just bring in your, your gym membership every month, I'll, I'll give you that in cash. That's uh, probably a way better idea. And it's 40, 50 bucks a month instead of, you know, yeah. hundreds. A hundred, yeah. Oh, it's, it's 
actual health benefit plans are a lot more than a hundred. <laughs> oh yeah. I was, I looked into those and it was not, it was like, you know, a couple hundred bucks plus the maintenance thing, oh. plus having to deal with it and the paperwork. And I was like, I need to hire an office person just for the health side. Yep. So yeah, that was a lot. Um, all right. Let me make sure I see if I have any other questions. So I don't kick myself. Normally I get off a call and think of a question, but I've been <laughs> planning this for a long time. So I think we're good. But, um, uh, oh, Zach wants to know if we can split a call next time. Because <laughs> you stop. <laughs> as long as 50 minutes, that's fine. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And um, any other uh, any other pieces of advice? I'm uh, what, this is uh, whatever wanted advice, not on wanted advice. Any other like no, advice you get for? I would just say write everything down, right? Because you're going you're going to go two different directions. One, you're going to be pulled by the fact that spring rush is going to come. You're like, man, I could grow, I could grow, I could grow. Um, you're going to be pulled by that, and then you're also going to be pulled by the fact that you're not going to have enough cash to do so, and you're going to want to constrict, right? So. What you need to do is know exactly how much cash you have now. And like we talked about at conference, know exactly what your cash on hand is going to be throughout the year. I would do it on a monthly basis. I'd be tracking mm -hmm. um, where you'd be spending that money and knowing which months you're going to have X amount in your bank um, and then stick to it. And that means if you're going to go on a three month diet, no equipment, you stick to it. Like it's a matter of you telling your crew, like we are not buying equipment until April 1st, period. And so make do, yeah. you know, if you got to dig with your hands, sorry that the shovel broke. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. but like that's how serious you have to get if you actually want the result right so write yeah. it down and then that needs to be like on the wall to where when you're like oh we could we could get another truck i saw this great deal and we have seven employees and only three trucks like that's going to be very tempting but you've got to stick to the plan got right? it and they, they and do the get profit sharing hearing, so they'll probably be on it right like if i tell them hey you guys will have massive probably real not massive but large profit sharing if we don't buy any equipment they'll because they haven't gotten any yet Right. And the same thing with P4P, they don't, they will not believe you until that's actually happened. Right. So all of these things can get fixed by just slowing down for one year, generating more profit. You're still going to grow a ton. It's like, yeah. you don't need to worry about that. And honestly, if you didn't grow at all, I would still be telling you the same thing. Yeah. Right. But I know with the website, the way it is, your branding's on point now, uh, you're going to grow up and just your pricing, like you said, it is going to, you're going to grow a lot in terms of top line revenue. But, um, that's not, that is not the, the benchmark for success in 2022. It's a hundred percent. How much cash do you have at the end of the year? Yeah. That should be the only thing you measure. Yeah. Because if you, if you have a hundred grand at the end of the year, you'll go into next spring, you'll buy three trucks, hire five to six more guys, and you'll scale to a million. And then you'll have an office person full time. Right. If you do yeah. this weird hybrid thing where you keep growing this year, but you have no cash, you're going to go into next year and you're not going to be still not going to be able to afford an office person. You're still going to be running around taking text messages from employees, right? Like uh, from, from customers, like yeah. that's going to happen. And so um, just, just write it down and stick to it. That's what I'd say. Cool. Sweet. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time, Mike. And I know I've still paid you for it, but I appreciate you taking the time <laughs> busy schedule. Uh, no, it means a lot. Either. But yeah. And I have one last tiny, very quick question for you. Like really yeah. quick. And I wanted to ask it at the end so you could cut it out of the interview if you wanted, if you're going to post it, if it didn't make you happy. But um, <laughs> so why, and I don't mean this because I want you to, I mean this because I'm curious in myself because I don't know, I'm watching a lot of Alex Ramos and his very deep shit. That, sorry. See, I curse again at the end of the video. But, <laughs> um, very deep stuff he does, like, you know, he talks about, like one of the things I was wondering was why have you not asked me to be a franchisee or do you just not ask people that? And what character flaw slash business flaw do you see? That <laughs> I've never asked anybody. Got it. And do you see any character or business flaws that are massive that are now you're just. No, no. You remind me a lot of one of our franchisees um, in North Bend. He joined, he was 16 when he joined. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a couple of years behind you in terms of um, kind of, he just got started last year. Yeah. I saw um, the video on him, I think. Yeah. So, um, you know, he, he's very similar in his mindset to like grow, grow, grow. So like he overgrew last year. He had like six employees within a few months and like a bunch of trucks, like, and it just there's the stress. Like he went from zero to, you know, almost fifty thousand a month in revenue within like his first couple of months, like crazy. Yeah. That's um, awesome. But it was a matter of that kind of growth requires cash. It requires management experience, and those that's a lack, mm -hmm. right? And so when I see your um, videos and what happened last year, those are the two things you're lacking in. It's just a matter of time, though. And so it's a matter of slowing down is extremely important, right? And if I could tell myself, I'd be telling myself the same thing. Like I lost like proceeding hairline man is because <laughs> of the stress right yeah and so if i could tell myself one thing when i was you know how old are you 19 
yeah, dude, yeah. See, that was my second year in Augusta, right? So if I could talk to my 19 year old self, I would say just take one year, don't grow, and focus on cash flow. Because if, if I would have done that in the short term, I would have stopped my growth, but my profit margin would have, would have jumped, and then I would have jumped three years forward by being able to have all that cash, Got right? It. So, but no, there's there's nothing. I, I would love to have you as a franchisee. <laughs> it's just like I don't ever <laughs> ask anybody. So. Cool. Well, thank you, Mike. Like I said, I appreciate it and uh, have a good rest of your day. And you'd have to paint the, the, the pink yellow. And I just, that's sad, what, right? honestly, that's <laughs> the biggest reason why I can't join the <laughs> That's awesome. Cool, brother. We'll stay in touch. Maybe we'll use some All of right. this. That's fun. Take care, brother. Thank you. See ya. Bye.